One of the most important things when you're doing facial rejuvenation and plastic surgery, especially facelift, is you have to find a plastic surgeon that understands the true science of facial aging. Because if you understand the science of how we age, that gives you the key to doing beautiful facial rejuvenation. The cookie cutter way of doing facelifts is a thing of the past. That's why I'm gonna show you why it's so important to understand the true science of aging and why the safe lift or the lift until facelift is truly ideal to match your needs to get a natural, youthful look. So let's explore this as I think you as an informed patient can really understand what this means to you and for you. The importance of facial aging and according to the science is important specifically as you look at the fat compartments. And the fat compartments are really the foundation for a lot of what we do. In, in facial aging. And in doing so, we will be um, studying the ways that you can minimize or stop aging. And of course, some of the most important things is don't smoke, avoid the sun, use uh, Retin-A. All these things, of course, are simple things to do and they obviate the need for surgery long-term. Uh, obviously also meditating and a low caloric diet is good and exercising, all those things that I think are very, very logical but most people don't do them. So, the true science behind facial aging has been described by us by well over a decade ago, and, and that's really important, because when we looked at how people age, it's not just the skin that sags, or even the bone that gets atrophic, but it's our fat compartments. The key and the cornerstone for facial aging is how we age in the central face from the loss of our fat compartments. And that allows us to also rejuvenate the face. If you rejuvenate the face by central filling and outer lifting, that is the key to modern rejuvenation. And the key to that is obviously understanding how we age so that you can understand how you can do the surgery to make you look better long term, but naturally so. Because after all, we are in the face protection, not witness protection program as plastic surgeons. And sometimes that's forgotten when we look at people that are famous or people that are supposed to actually be in the public eye and yet they have been totally transformed. So we know that it's, it's science of aging is very, very predictable based upon the fat compartments. And we know that the deeper fat compartments are the ones that go early and are the ones that make us age much more so, especially in the central part of the face. Because we know that with fat loss, you get volumetric shape change. And that has been an epiphany as we look at facial aging. And, and that's very important to understand. And also, as we age, we age in our central fat compartments first and around our eyes. That's why when we look at somebody in their 30s and 40s, where do we see aging? We see it in the eyes. The eyes actually lose fat, so that's why the skin becomes more redundant in that area. So the goal is to actually look like you've never had surgery. And that's very, very important. So how do you do that? Well, you have to replenish the, the fat as you age. And so is it genetic or is it environmental? Most of the time, aging is genetically predetermined. And as we age and going from a, in, in a patient going from their 20s to their 70s, you can see that volumetric facial fat loss, as you can see on this patient. And not only do you lose fat in their face, but they also develop jowls and then neck laxity. So it is the fat, it is the skin, it's the muscle and the bone. And these changes become very evident because as you age, the marker for going from fillers and neuromodulators to a true facelift is when they when you begin to have facial jowling. If you still do facial fillers when you have jowling, then you don't look natural. You look very overdone and full. And in a liquid facelift, in a younger patient like this beautiful young woman, you can actually make them look incredibly beautiful and rejuvenated with neuromodulators and fillers like we did in this patient. She looks amazing just with neuromodulators and fillers. But as you age, sometimes the neck becomes more lax and so then you actually can add a lower face and neck left in that area. And then as people age in their 60s and 70s, you add jowls and then you get neck and facial fat loss and atrophy of the skin, then you actually have to do a real facelift. 
So the key component is the facial fat compartment. The restoration of that central facial fat in the lateral pull of your facelift, the lift and fill facelift or the safe lift, the use of soft subcutaneous fat augmentation is key. So filling, centrally lifting on the outer aspect really allows you to look natural both in the face, the eyes, and the neck. So that is the cornerstone for all of these. And that's why we call the fat compartments the GPS for facial aging. And it's also the GPS to understand how and what you should do for facial rejuvenation. And that is a thing that really is the cornerstone of understanding how the modern facelift has been totally transformed by the addition of the science of aging with your understanding of how you age with how you do the procedure. Filling centrally and lifting laterally. And that understanding is augmented by not only the anatomic understanding, but also our ability to do this procedure in a safe manner by lifting the outer SMAS, whether it's a SMASectomy uh, or a SMAS stacking. That really helps to restore and maintain facial shape long term. So it is vital to not only understand the science of aging, but then to apply that directly to the human face that ages to give you a long term natural result. And only in that manner can you then not only help transform and rejuvenate somebody, but you can truly make them look natural long term. So that in essence is a very good summary of how people age and how you could transform it in a natural way using the safe facelift or the lift and fill facelift. Stay tuned for more.